Okay, uh, it's 11. I think I should start. Can you hear me? Rimpi, I am uh, unmuting you. Huna Bajar, Rimpi. Okay. Bye, Bye Susan. Mm. All right. Um, so let's start today's topic, which is bituminous mix design. So you see why uh, this topic is imper important, but still we ignore this. So the reason is like um, bituminous mix design is used for roads. You all know that. And roads, when they fail, they don't uh, yield any fatal accidents, generally. Okay, like when a building collapses, you know that everybody who, is, who are present in that building, surely they are going to die. But in case of road, that effect is not <coughs> that uh, instantaneous. Okay, and people generally accept the fact that road should fail. Road usually fails. What is the big deal about it? But if a road is properly designed, if the bituminous mix, which is going to be laid as a uh, wearing course is properly designed like you design concrete in concrete lab then roads should not fail that rapidly okay <clears throat> and as a fact we generally ignore bituminous mix design and simply we mix bitumen and aggregate without going for any calculations and designing calculations so uh, since this topic is ignored and the result we can see there are potholes cracks uh, ace breaks uh, you, you can see lots of distresses in pavements so uh, i think bituminous mix design should be given its importance and you as an engineer uh, should be aware that there is some kind of mix design in uh, road also all right so before coming to this, uh, let's look at the contents. So, there uh, in today's presentation, we will be discussing like six different topics. All right. The first one is aggregate evaluation. How aggregates are evaluated? That you have already learned in fifth semester laboratory. Then, second one is called asphalt asphalt binder evaluation. That means uh, asphalt binder means bitumen only. Okay, you don't get confused with the term asphalt. Asphalt and bitumen means same. They may have some kind of differences in your uh, petrochemical industry, but in civil engineering or in transportation engineering, whenever we use the term asphalt, we mean bitumen only, or whenever we use the term bitumen, we mean asphalt only. So bitumen and asphalt are <coughs> can be used um, like uh, they are similar or you can say the same thing so bitumen is a binder you know that so second content says uh, bitumen evaluation <clears throat> and that thing you have just learned in your second uh, transportation engineering laboratory in your sixth semester we, you have already given a test also then third we will go for marcel specimens how to prepare it how to density void analysis, how to stability flow test is done, and how to analyze the results. And the last one is OBC, that is optimum binder content, how it's find out. All right, so let's start with the first one, aggregate evaluation. Okay. 
so uh, by the way uh, let me tell you that um, after your first lecture after your second lecture uh, i also took one zoom uh, one zoom lecture with the eighth semester student and uh, it was found out that zoom has reduced the session timing now it's not unlimited okay uh, after every half an hour the session gets closed so like i will get a warning that two minutes left three minutes left like that so i will let you know that the session is going to end and um, anyway these things are getting recorded and immediately the session gets closed i will start a new session and we'll share the id and password with dixita okay all right so uh, the first part as i said aggregate evaluation so in the fifth semester you have done lots of tests regarding aggregates like los angeles aggregation and your um, that aggregate casting value test aggregate impact value test uh, flakiness index elongation index you, you have done lots of tests and you 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 must know why these tests are performed you already know what los angeles aggregation value has to do with the performance of the aggregates that relates to hardness, the aggregate impact value relates to toughness. Now, whatever the test is, okay, whatever the test is, be it abrasion, be it soundness, be it crust face count, okay, I think you are aware of this too, Los Angeles abrasion, right? You have performed this. Soundness, soundness is like durability testing. Okay, durability testing, yeah, you didn't perform this test, but uh, you must have studied in, in your uh, theory, okay, that using sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate, like how some test is performed. Uh, next is SEN equivalent. SEN equivalent test is performed to check <coughs> what is the content of clay, okay, what is the content of clay or dust in a aggregate sample and in this test we what we do we take a sample a mixer of clay and sand and we mix it with water and we keep it we keep the cylindrical sample to settle down when we keep it to settle down the sand particles the heavier particles will get settled and the clay particles will remain uh, floating around so we can clearly differentiate between the uh, height of the sand content and clay content okay so <clears throat> from that test we can find out what is the percentage of clay so <clears throat> why this sand equivalent test is performed because we don't want clay to be present in our mixer if lots of clays are present in the mixer so when we mix aggregate and bitumen the clay particles or the dust particles okay the dust particles will get mixed with the bitumen and the bitumen will lose its consistency. Okay, that's why the sand equivalent test is performed. Then <coughs> crust face count. Crust face count means uh, generally you know that uh, whenever we want to use the aggregates in any kind of construction works, let it be concrete construction or let it be bituminous construction. We want the aggregates to be angular. If you have learned this in concrete technology also, that angular aggregates are, um, are, are preferable. Why? Because the bonding is good there. All right. Not only angular, but we want the aggregates to be have have uh, to have some kind of texture. Okay, some kind of ununiform texture. And because of that texture, if the surface is smooth, then you know that if the surface is so smooth that it cannot hold the binder, then it is of no use, right? So, tomorrow the hisa sake rasta ka hot dango dango hill to dia thake that those aggregates are river aggregates, right? So, those aggregates, um, the round aggregates, the smooth textured, the round aggregates are of course river aggregates because it comes down along with the water of river it flows with the river and during that time uh, it gets rolled down and down and it becomes perfectly <coughs> sphere okay 
that's why referral aggregates you get uh, like spherical in nature but if you get the aggregates by crushing or by blasting your hills mountains those aggregates will be always angular because those are uh, those are obtained by blasting the don't write here uh, we got we get those aggregates by blasting your hills and mountains so now if we have the river aggregates big river aggregates then you see that we simply even if we have a uh, smaller river aggregates we cannot use those aggregates why the reason is simple they are round and the surface texture is very smooth tumalage suisale dekhiba wa nodir tolor pa jodi eta hill loya ha surface to sui tumar smooth na lage na that's it so we cannot use this type of aggregates the face the faces the surfaces has to be like uh, ununiform they has to be rough so so that's why we have to crust the aggregates and we need to have at least two crust faces tumi jodi a aggregate to crust kora like this then you will having this is number 1 this is number 2 so you will be having two cross faces and cross faces are generally will be rough compared to this this two right so uh, take this as the final warning tomalokor etu class it's i am not going to take attendance and i am not going to uh, like uh, it, it was not mandatory so tomaloke nijor issa mote aisa nijor issa mote class korisa so ebila bandorami kori na thakiba okay <coughs> so next one is policing policing is also you know that when um, the roads the road is there and the wheels will move over the roads then after some time because of the friction of the wheels with the road road surface the aggregate surfaces which is like at the uh, top most surface of the course layer it gets polished out it gets polished out by the frictional force applied by the wheels so when the aggregates gets polished out the frictional resistance will get reduced so when the frictional resistance get reduced you know you can face lots of problems like if you apply brake it will skid so you, you know you know this things okay why frictional resistance is important we have uh, done many questions also using coefficient of friction and the next is plakinas and elongation tax index and you have done this two tests i am not going to discuss and after that you also do gradation so gradation curve maybe in aggregates you didn't perform but in case of soil you have performed what is sieve analysis you know what is sieve analysis you have performed uh, after sieve analysis you have prepared gradation graphs and you know how to comment on this curves whether the sample is like poorly graded whether the sample is well graded you can directly say just by looking at the sieve of the curve right so that is gradation specific gravity um, even i myself took this class if you remember how to calculate specific gravity of aggregates then absorption on this terms are like it means the same absorption means how uh, how much water it can absorb all right then <coughs> perform aggregate blending to arrive at suitable gradation of aggregates now this term is totally new to you what is aggregate blending aggregate blending means you have to mix two or three sources of aggregates to obtain the required gradation curve of the mix okay i am going to discuss this thing in details but for now you just remember that aggregate blending means aggregate mixing mixing of two or three sources of aggregates to arrive at a suitable gradation okay that is required by the designing so you see <coughs> aggregate blending so so aggregate blending 
it says that it is unlikely that a single nacelle aggregate material will meet all the gradation specifications. So gradation specifications will be like this. You know, like in uh, concrete mix design, you have a specific code, right? You have followed um, code number this for concrete mix design. But in case of your bituminous mix design, your main text will be MRTH. MRTH, I think you are aware what is MRTH. Can anybody tell me what is MRTH? The raising hand. MRTH, Ministry of, what is, what is it? Nobody knows? This Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. So there is a um, document prepared by Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways and it specifies all the requirements, all the uh, like uh, <coughs> requirements of the, not only bituminous mix, anything related to your road and bridges, all right? So in case of bituminous mix, in case of bituminous mix, that means the top layer, okay? Even in bituminous mix, there are two layers that you know, right? The first layer is called wearing cores, that is also bituminous mix, that means mixer of bitumen and aggregate. And the second layer, that is binder course, that is also bituminous mix, right? That binder course is not mandatory, but it should be provided, all right? So that binder course, the main difference is that in this binder course, the aggregate particles will be larger. So anyway, in bituminous, in bituminous concrete, whenever we say BC, it means bituminous concrete and bituminous concrete is the material we are going to use in the topmost layer, okay? The material used in the secondmost layer is called DBM, DBM. So DBM means dense bituminous macadam, all right? So <coughs> this is bituminous concrete, bituminous concrete, um, again, <coughs> out of two types, uh, bituminous concrete one, BC1 and BC2. Difference is that in BC1, the aggregate particles are a little, a little bit larger than BC2. You see the maximum size is 19 mm, here the maximum size is 13 mm. And the thickness is also more here, here the thickness. That means depending upon the layer thickness, you can choose, you can know which bituminous concrete you are going to use. Either it can be BC1 or BC2. Suppose it is BC1. So in BC1, the gradation is given. So what is this? What is this? This thing is nothing but your uh, sieve analysis results, right? So 26.5 mm passing cumulative, you see, cumulative percentage of weight, uh, total weight passing. That means the same thing that you found out using sieve analysis that is shown here. So 26.5 mm passing should be 100 percent, 19 mm passing should be in between 79 to 100, 13.2 passing should be in between. Why it's uh, given in range? Because it will be very difficult to find a uh, specific source of aggregate that will give you exactly these results. See, these are requirements. These are requirements. That means if you want to um, construct a bituminous mix, a bituminous concrete, uh, BC1, then your aggregate if you then the aggregate you uh, should be using should have this kind of gradation curve okay this kind of results if we perform uh, safe analysis of that aggregate now this becomes a very difficult task where will you find uh, uh, this type of aggregates where all the criteria are being fulfilled so in order to do so, it's not possible. See, that's why it says it is very unlikely that a single natural aggregate material will meet all the gradation specifications. So, suppose to me, Korobarbora, aggregate Anisa. I mean, this is a Rastar Kahot de Palaito dia. Rastar Kahot Palaito de Lev. Maximum aggregates, uh, suppose there is a heap. Okay, there is a heap. And you will see that almost uh, like 80% of the materials, 80% of the aggregates in that heap will be of uniform sizes. Then how can you think that after doing sieve analysis, you will get this kind of result of that, of 
uh, those aggregates it's not possible right so that's why we will use two or more aggregates of different gradations and are they are blended blended means they are mixed to meet the specified gradation limits so we will not use a single source now this may be sent this may be sent so we will be mixing these two sources to get to get our required or our desired limits in the gradation curve so in order to in order to mix you see <coughs> uh, suppose this you see this part okay this saffron uh, colored part it shows the desired limit that is specified by your mrth code okay this is specified by your mrth code and you have one aggregate that is showing this kind of gradation curve upon sieve analysis and one sort of aggregate that is coarse aggregate that is showing this kind of curve and our this this may be third one third one is filler okay filler means your uh, mainly dust dust particles that is the third one so you have one two and three three types of three sources of aggregates and none of which falls in the desired range all right so in this case what we will do we will mix we will mix these three sources and we'll see if now the mixer falls in this particular range or not now if we say mix that is a very vague term if we mix two things well, of course we have to mention about the um, proportions right without without specifying the proportions how will you how will you mix three different sources right so you need to find if, if you say that mix these three sources of aggregates then uh, you have to be um, you have to be specific like um, take 10 percent of this take 40 percent of this then take 50 percent of this like that you have to specify right now in order to find out those percentages you have to use different techniques first one is of course trial and error trial and error you have uh, you have already done these things everywhere what is trial and error you already know right in mathematics also while solving your nonlinear equations you use trial and error techniques that means uh, first you see first you take 10 percent 40 percent 50 percent you see if it is lying here somewhere here then you know that okay so i have to increase the weight here right so take 55 percent here reduce the weight here so it will come down somewhere here so like that you have to do trial and error then second one is called graphical we generally use these two techniques triangular chart and rod foots technique so triangular chart uh, looks like this okay triangular chart looks like this i'm not going to discuss these things because it will take time but you just remember the technique that if somehow you face this type of situation where you have to mix three three different sources of aggregates to obtain a single to obtain a uh, to obtain to obtain a like new source which should be lying in a given specified range then you have to follow triangular chart okay in triangular chart you will be having three different sources source a source b source c you have to plot different points there and ultimately uh, after lots of calculations you will get the percentages directly that from suppose this is source a this is source b and this is source c now after doing the calculations after doing the graphical plots you will be directly getting the answer that from source a i have to take 53 percent from source b i have to take this person uh, from source c this person so by looking at the name itself you can say that this triangular chart method is applicable only when you have three sources but what if you have um, more than three sources if you have two sources then it's very easy simply by trial and error you can do it 
okay it becomes difficult to do trial and error if the sources are more than two it means three sources are there so you cannot use trial and error there you can use of course but it will be time taking so use and we generally use triangular chart then triangular chart also the limitation is that uh, we cannot use triangular chart if the source of aggregates are more than three that means here there are four sources now in this triangle where will you plot the fourth the fourth source d so we will use rot foots technique rot foots technique um, these are those just simply it says the p is the required percentage of material given says of the blended aggregates abc is the percentage of material by the uh, of each aggregate okay and small abc determines says the proportion okay that means um, if i need to check whether my blending is working or not then what what do i have to do suppose for 9.5 mm i am checking so for 9.5 mm our desired desired okay <coughs> wow that's it uh, uh. sir uh, percentage to low percentage by weight low percentage by volume low are see metal analysis ki hot kore जानो इम्पसिबल क हम स्क्रीन आई से जगह टेन मिनट्स रिमेनिंग ओके सो आमी वेट अप लो ऑलराइट वेट बिली बोले इन आवर डे टू डे लिंक्स वी मीन मास होंडे ओके ऑल दो वेट एंड मास आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स ओके हम्म यात्रा लिखा हुआ से परसेंटेज बाय वेट All right. So, okay. So for nine point five, nine point five mm chip size, we know that our desired range is fifty two to seventy two. So that means this answer should be fifty two to seventy two if we use some kind of calculations here. So, uh, capital A is the actual Actual value, actual value of source A. So there will be four charts, four charts, right? A, B, C, D. For um, source A, suppose nine point five mm passing is seventy six. So capital A will be seventy six. For source B, suppose that was eighty four. So that will be capital B will be eighty four. For source C, suppose that was zero. Then C capital C will be zero. And small A, B, C will be the Uh, percentages you obtain after solving this triangular chart method or rot foots technique then you will have one particular answer to this and then you check whether that answer is lying between your uh, 52 to 72 or not if it lies then it's okay it's not uh, it's not okay because it is fulfilling only for 9.5 mm chips you have to do it For all the shapes, and it should it should be lying in the given range for that particular combination. Can any one do it? No, no. That 26.5 mm or more, five um, percent or so, 4.75. I am going to increase the percentage of A uh, to 10 percent. Cannot be like that. Source A is only six percent. No, you have to multiply 0.06 to all the To all the values of source A, for source B, if you are taking 10%, it will be 10% for all the shapes, right? <coughs> so like that, you have to do. Oh, get a silly. So anyway, uh, see, this is 22.4, 13.2, like that. 
this is the target range you can see this is the target range 100 90 to 100 75 to 90 like that so you have the trial and error method use course because there are only two sources aggregate a and aggregate b so for aggregate a this is the actual value actual values after doing sieve analysis this is for aggregate b okay so aggregate a now we are taking 50% from aggregate A, 50% from aggregate B. You know that the first trial should be like this only, 50-50. So after taking 50%, this 100 become 50, 90 become 45, 30 become 15, like that. And here also for aggregate B, this 100 become 50. So everything is half. Now the blend, blend means the mix. 50% of this plus 50% of this. If you mix, you will see. The 50 plus 50 becomes 100, 45 plus 50 it becomes 95, and it becomes like this. And this is the blend, that means mixer of aggregate A and B. And what is the target range? What was the what was our target? Our target was like that. It should be it should be falling in the range, like 100 was there. Then 13.2 uh, passing should be in between 90 to 100. In our case, it's coming 95, so it's okay. It should be 75 to 90. In our case, it is 65. So this is wrong. Then again, it should be 50 to 70. In our case, it is 47.5. It's wrong. Here also, it's wrong. Here also, it's wrong. Here, it's okay. Here, it's wrong. So you see, these are not coming. So, <coughs> uh, so you have to again perform trial and error. This time, maybe. So now you will see that it is 65 okay we have to increase it if we have to increase it we have to take we have to give more weightage to this aggregate b because it's 50 whether it's 30 so if you give more weightage to 50 and less weightage to 30 then there is a chance that it will get increased right it will get increased and uh, your limit will be fulfilled but somewhere you will see uh, okay you are lucky that in every case you are falling short so in if so in every case you are falling short so if you in the second trial if you make it 60 40 then check then you may get a desired range where the where the result will fall in the specified range so <clears throat> next technique is called rot foods rot foods uh, is very complicated and it's not possible to discuss over uh, a platform like this okay but you just remember the name it's called rot foods technique okay in rot foods technique what we do uh, we go for rot foods technique if you have more than three sources Two times trial and error, three times triangular chart. Jodi three times ke basic hai, then rough foot technique use kore ami. Tete ya rough foot technique ko dekhi sa ya ta kya dal sa? Er dal sa, two dal, three dal, four dal. So four different sources are there. Okay. So it is also a graphical technique. Jod directly you see the percentages are you are getting. So after doing this, after lots of plotting, calculations, and all those you are obtaining the percentages this is 22 percent 45 percent 25 percent and 8 percent so uh, this all percentages 18 25 45 22 these are your results that means if you take 22 percent from a 45 percent from b 25 percent from c 18 percent from d and if you mix the mix or the blend will have a um it will it will yield a mix and if we perform sieve analysis of that mix our sieve analysis results the gradation curve will fall in the desired range and that is called your rot foods method <coughs> okay all right so it says only two minutes are remaining so Mutun topic start no colo. I mean I am I will share the code within two minutes. So Karba give a doubt as a huda. 
without a second of word. Raise your hands. Anybody has any doubt? No? Okay. All right. So in SPAL vendor evaluation part, like um, asphalt, you already know that is called bitumen, and you have performed the test on bitumen virtually, and you are aware of all the important tests. Okay, but um, that is not enough. There are some other tests also, and we will discuss if it is required in the flow of this PPT only. All right. So, in asphalt bender evaluation, we are just going to concentrate on different tests and why these tests are performed on bitumen. Okay. So, I am simply ending the If you are facing audio problem, just uh, close the app, then again restart it. it may work. All right. End. End session code is left.